Hi, so my name's Beth and Vincent and I'm the managing partner at Open Velocity and I'm here to talk to you about how to deliver better presentations to executive stakeholders. So we're going to start off with a tip that kind of occurs pre-presentation and essentially it's setting the groundwork to understand your stakeholders. In any situation, you're going to have different groups of stakeholders with different needs and different states and you want to approach them slightly differently. So I love a magic quadrant. So here we've got one that basically shows you within any decision making process, you've got people with high influence and low influence and stakeholders can be individuals or groups of individuals. Keep that in mind. You've then got people or groups with a high stake. So they've got a high kind of interest in the outcome of the decision and people with a lower stake. So essentially, in any process, you want to divide and conquer. And this is something, you know, I advise you do, you know, don't spend loads of time on it. It's more a thought exercise. You can do it on the back of a napkin. But think about who are the people with high influence and low stakes, because those people are very interesting and they can be your champions in a decision making process, because essentially you can leverage their influence. And I would be as explicit to go and speak to the individual or group of individuals that I think fall in my champions box and say, hey, would you champion this decision? Would you help it get pushed through? This is what it's going to mean for you. This is what it's going to mean for the organization. You've then got the high influence and high stake groups. And those are the people that really want to spend, you know, the majority of your time on engaging, persuading and inspiring. And essentially you want to show them, you know, how, how is this decision? How is what I'm proposing going to be better for them? How is it going to produce better outcomes? How is it going to contribute to revenue for the company? How is it going to contribute to something tangible? So spend a lot of time with those people because ultimately, actually, if you can't get it past your kind of priority stakeholders, the decision's probably not going to go in your stake in your favor. So you've then got the people with a high stake and low influence. <laughs> this, I'm afraid, is often marketing, um, especially when it comes to projects like, let's say, CRM changes. We love a surprise CRM change. And essentially, with this group, you do want to consult them because you know, the, the impact of the decision is going to be so high on them that you want to consult them and make sure that you know, you're not really frustrating them. You're not going to introduce something that makes their life, their work, unworkable. You've then got your kind of low stake, low influence group. And those are people you, you want to inform and you want to basically monitor their kind of feedback on the proposed decision. Because you might actually find those people that you think are low stake and low influence move into one of these groups when you fully get to the bottom of actually what their work is, what are they trying to achieve. So that's something to be mindful of. So set your groundwork, engage people pre-presentation, get those champions on site. So secondly, when you come to present to executive stakeholders and whether this is, you know, a formal presentation with a whiteboard and, you know, the slides and all of that kind of stuff, or whether it's in a meeting and you're just proposing an idea, I want you to keep this uh, slightly weirdly named BORA acronym in mind. So you want to keep it succinct. Any presentation, any, any kind of pitch to senior stakeholders, you want to keep it really digestible and understandable. And the way I like to structure my kind of presentation, or even if it's a document I'm presenting to senior stakeholders, is I'll start off with the background, start off with context, paint the picture. I'll then get straight to the opportunity. So, you know, what, what tangible thing is on the ground? What can we actually get out of making this decision? How is it going to impact the company? How is it going to drive revenue? Then you want to move on to the request. And I think this is something that people often miss out of presentations. So they'll, they'll kind of set the background, set the opportunity, and then kind of leave it up to the senior stakeholder to kind of figure out what they're asking for. Be really explicit. What is your ask? Is it budget? Is it resource? Is it a decision to be made? And then finally, you know, stick all of your appendices with this information. You know, if people want to go into detail, make sure they've got the data, make sure they've got the contextual stuff on hand, but don't try and get through all of it within a meeting, because frankly, you're just not going to be able to get through all the nuance of the material within a tight time frame. because I think it's fair to say that when you're presenting to senior stakeholders, their time is often really precious. And if you've got an hour, half an hour for the presentation, frankly, that's all you've got. So you need to keep it very, very time bound. And this brings me on to point number three. You've got to anticipate interruptions. So I think a lot of us have been in meetings with senior stakeholders where, you know, we've started off doing our presentation, doing our pitch, and we've been interrupted with questions. 
And a lot of people find this quite frustrating. And you know what, to some degree, it is a little bit frustrating. But I think we've got to understand that senior stakeholders are often questioning stuff because they're really invested, they're interested, they're trying to dig into things a little bit deeper. And actually, there's nothing worse than doing a presentation to senior stakeholders and there is tumbleweed and silence. <laughs> that, that's a worse sign. So the very fact you're getting those questions is excellent, but you've got to anticipate them, you've got to build them into the meeting structure. So again, this comes back to keeping it succinct, you know, start off with the background and the opportunity, maybe in kind of five, ten slides or, you know, one page document, but then give that space for those questions to happen and just anticipate it is going to, you can't fight against it. But then also, at the end of the meeting, you've got to bring it back around to the request. Because again, if, if you've been derailed, it, you know, some people, you know, run out of time, oh my gosh, we've got five minutes left, or, you know, run out of time, those people have got to go and they've not got anything out of the discussion. So anticipate interruptions, bring it back to that request. And you've got to know your request, know your ask before you're going into the meeting. We're going to move on to you know, a point that's linked with almost my first point, which is about setting that groundwork. And before you kind of do your proposal, or your presentation, you know, making sure you understand the stakeholders, you understand the landscape, you've done some of that pre-work. After you've done the meeting, I think there's a, a lot of kind of post decision work. So hopefully you've got the decision. You want to basically keep people abreast of the good work you're doing. And what I love to do is send around a weekly update. And it's a really super short email I'll put together, or it can go on an internal wiki, for example, as well, if you've got that. But you know, I'll send it to the wider organization, not just stakeholders, and it keeps people abreast of the good work you're doing. And it can be as simple as, you know, a summary, so this is what's happened this week, a little bit of, again, setting the background, and then a bulleted list of updates. This is what we've done, these are the results we've achieved, these are the things we've launched. And you know, if you may not have loads of stuff that you've launched, it could just be, this is what the team has been doing, this is what they've enjoyed working on. It, it doesn't have to be you know, really in-depth or anything like that, or anything scary. And then finally, this is the most important point of this communication, close with an invitation to engage. And I've done these before and sent them around organizations and, you know, send them to developers, engineers, and actually opening that door and saying like, look, this is what marketing is up to. These are some of the things we've been doing. These are some of the results, the outcomes we've got. Hey, does anyone have any questions or thoughts on them? It invites that conversation and it really helps you kind of nurture your internal audience. We're very good at nurturing external audiences, but I think we can do better internally as well. And finally, I, I just wanted to kind of give a little bit of context on why um, you know, I'm now relatively well, pretty senior in my career, I run a company, and why I pass sometimes on things my team brings to me. So firstly, I pass on stuff because frankly, I don't understand it. And I think you know, there's this kind of misconception that people in really senior positions know everything. We definitely don't. And especially when we're dealing with specialists like SEO specialists, you know, you've got whole depth and contextual information that I may not have. So sometimes I just don't get it. I don't get what, what I'm supposed to do here. I don't get the context. I don't get the background. So then that goes back to keeping it succinct. Secondly, I just simply don't have time or budget. And I think, you know, when, when people are kind of proposing and, and ask, you know, that they've got a, a proposal to do something, they might put in the budget cost of it, they might put in the financial cost of it, but they don't necessarily recognize that there's a time cost. And, you know, budget and time are the two things that are very, very finite within an organization. So have a little bit of think about the time implication and what you're asking for. And does the organization have the resource to deliver on that? So sometimes, yeah, I just don't have time and I don't have the budget for it. Thirdly, I don't see the big picture. And what I mean by this is, you know, you're, you're pitching something to me and I don't understand or I can't make the link between what you're pitching and our organizational goals, our business goals. And this is where it's really important, you know, even if you're an SEO specialist, PPC specialist, whatever, that you understand that organizational objectives that you all should be working towards. Any good business should have a business plan and should be able to communicate to that to you. So wherever possible, make sure what you're proposing fits into that bigger picture. And then finally, I just, I don't see how this is gonna make us money. Businesses exist to make money. You know, we, we live in a capitalist world. We kind of can't fight against that. Um, so, you know, I, I sometimes I just can't see the route to ROI. And I don't necessarily have to see the direct route. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, we are guaranteed this ROI within this time period. You know, I do understand, that especially in things like SEO, where it takes time, there's a lot of unknowns, that it can be a bit more intangible. But I need to be able to see the causal link. If I can't see that, I'm not going to sign it off. So I hope that's given you some context about how to approach those conversations with senior decision makers. Thank you.